Okay, grade eights. Welcome to lesson 8.4. So getting to the end of the year slowly. Now, this one here is kind of like the one we just did previously where I gave you the three views and you had to identify what the actual object looked like. Well, in this case, what's going to happen is I'm going to be giving you uh, a translation or some sort of transformation, reflection, rotation, whatever. And your job is to tell me what took place. So for now, we're going to start with just single translations. So you won't have to worry about doubles or triples. You just got to worry about one. So if you take a look here, um, it says here that there are three types of transformations. Now, you should know by now that we've got rotations, reflections, and translations, slips, turns, and flips. Okay. Now, if you look around anywhere in the world, you're going to find things which are translations. And as I look around my classroom here as I'm making this video, you can see that I've got cabinet doors uh, on the sides of my cabinets. And they're all rectangular doors, which means and there's, they're lay, lined up across the cabinets. They're all uh, translated horizontally, and they're all exactly the same. I also can look. I notice I've got several whiteboards side by side. Those are also translated horizontally. Um, my cabinet doors could be swung, and they could be a, a reflection. And uh, roof tiles on my roof, if you look up, we have tiled ceilings. You can see that they could be either translated, rotated, or reflected. And of course, my door is a reflection if you think about it being swung. All right. Now, one of the things to understand about all of these translations is that the most key important thing is that the size and the shape of the object never changes. All right. Only the orientation. All right? Now, just as a basic review, you're going to have to identify a translation. So when you identify a translation, you're going to be given the original and a translated image, and your job is to tell me how far it goes left and right. Now, when you fill in your notes, you don't have to draw something as complicated as this. Just draw a small item, square, rectangle, put its translated image over here, and join it with a translation arrow. Now, your job is going to say how many down, how many right. That's And tell me it's a translation. So you have to identify it, and then you have to tell me the direction and the movement that it takes to get there. So that's pretty straightforward. Most of you are going to have no difficulty with that because you're going to be able to see both on the Cartesian plane, both the original object, be a triangle ABC, and you're going to see its moved object or translated image, which is A prime, B prime, C prime, and you're just going to be able to bubble jump down and bubble jump over to find out what the direction of the movement is. Reflections are the same. All right. We know that we have an object. Now, you don't have to draw a frog. You can draw whatever you want on the left-hand side of your notes. And we've done this before, so you should have no trouble being able to reflect this. I chose something pretty straight, pretty unique, but you, you know, I have the advantage of having a computer, so you can't really do it this way. But you can see that it's a perfect mirror image. If I was to fold that on that line, the two frogs would match perfectly. Okay. Now, this is a horizontal reflection. Now, you really have to be careful with this, because even though the line's vertical, the movement of the object tells you the reflection. So if you said this is a vertical reflection, I can't help you because it's not. This is a horizontal reflection across a vertical reflection line. So horizontal, and this, this because these are not labeled, you really don't know whether it's left to right or right to left, but that really doesn't matter because reflection lines go across a line. It doesn't matter which direction you go. Now, vertical reflections, okay, go back up here. You can see I've got my frog up top and a frog up bottom. This has been reflected vertically. The object goes up and down. So you'd be telling me that the object reflected vertically across the horizontal line, and you might, you'll have to give me the location of the horizontal line. To identify a rotation, again, you have to tell me, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay. So the following is a rotation here. What kind of rotation has happened here? Well, you can see it's, it's a top view of a piano. So you can see it's been rotated 180 degrees. There would have been 90 into this area, and 180 puts it into here. There's my rotation point. Okay, So it's going to be 180 degrees clockwise rotation, and you have to tell me it's around the origin. Without this little point here of rotation, I have no idea how to get from here to here. All right. So you can go 180 degrees clockwise, and of course it says there's another rotation that will result in this. And that's true. You could go the other direction counterclockwise. All right, so you can use the matching one. Let's take a look at the two pianos now. I've got it going from left side. You can see the arrow. It kind of gives you an idea. This is the original, and this is the new one because there's no A's or A primes. So as a result of that, this is what's been moved. Now, it's only gone from here to here, and you can see this is just sort of stood up. So it is a 90 degrees, and it's going clockwise direction, so it's 90 degrees clockwise. Now, you can get to this location by going 90, 180, 270, 
counterclockwise. Both of those are acceptable. Okay. Remember, for all transformations, translations, reflections, and rotations, the images remain congruent, exactly the same. Right. So hopefully you can keep up with the notes. Um, this is one of those things where uh, there's nothing really new being taught to you. It's just taking reversing your knowledge so you can identify to, to tell me what's happened. All right. So we take a look at the next one. This is just an exercise. Okay. What I'd like you to do is like you to draw an object, and I'd like you to reflect it down. Okay, so reflect it, translate it down. Now it doesn't matter how you do it. But just do it. Now I'm telling you to do the original one up in this area up here. And I'm just going to use a triangle ABC. All right? And you can see that I'm translating down and to the right. So if you see this type of an object, and yours is going to be drawn very similar, put your object up here and drew your translated image down here. Make sure your prime marks are in place and you have your translation arrow. When you're given this type of an image, your job is to be able to tell me what took place. So in this case, triangle ABC translated. And if you take a look, it went down one, two, three, four, five, and it went right one, two, three, four, five. Remember to use the spaces as you're counting, not as the dots or the lines if you're on a, a grid, right? So this is down five, right five. And this is what you're going to be told you're going to have to get. And I put the instructions up here so you could do it correctly, but the reality is the, the question is going to be, here is your relation, sorry, here, here is your image, here is your translated image, original image. What took place? Was it a reflection, a rotation, or a translation? All right. So here's a reflection one. Now again, I need you to do one. So here is A, B, C again, and A prime, B prime, C prime. So copy that down. And I put the instructions on there on how to do it. And that you'll have A prime, B prime, C prime. Now your job again, when you have this, is take a look at A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime. And tell me what took place. Now this is going sideways. Because it's going sideways, I'll take that out there. Because it's going this direction, it's a horizontal reflection. <laughs> Vertical line over here. Take a look. It is two units to the right of point C. So this would be a horizontal reflection across a mirror line, a vertical mirror line, which is two units to the right of C. You should be able to change, and, sorry, you should be able to, uh, um, what do you call it there, recreate this from the information you give me. All right, going to the next one. Again, this is going to be rotation. So I'm going to have you create the rotation, and then I'm going to show you how to describe it. So here's ABC. And I want, it's going to be a 270 degree clockwise rotation. And it's going to go around and it will be to here. Now you have all the tracing paper and all the information you need from your previous lessons to create this rotation. So pause the recording and create it. Now, again, lesson's objective is for you to be able to take a look at a rotation and tell me what happened with all the information that's required for me to reproduce it. So we have triangle ABC. It's being rotated 270 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin right here. Okay? There's your origin. So I've got a grid in here. Now when we do the next ones, you'll see that this stuff here is not really going to work too much with the um, with the grid right yet. Right yet. That comes later. All right. But what we're going to do here is for question five, it's going to say, okay, here's question, here's, here's triangle A. How do you get from triangle A to triangle B? What type of a translation? Well, you know that you cannot take triangle A, and I, I don't know if I could do a quick little sketch on here to, to help you out with some of the beginnings of this. But there's triangle A, all right? It's obvious that it's, to get to B, it's not rotate, it's not translated, is it? All right. To get to C, it's not translated, but to get to D, it is. All right. What about to do a reflection? All right. If I reflect it, look what happens. A will make it to B, won't it? All right. Could A reflect here? Well, if you took and put your reflection line 
on this diagram right there, A will flip over and become part of C. So your job here is to take and tell me how do you get from A to B? Is there more than one location? Is there more than one, sorry, what's more than one transformation? If you take a look here, you'll notice that we have um, in here, right this point right there, you could put a trans, sorry, a rotation point and you could spin A around, couldn't you? A could spin all the way around here, this point to the top point, to there. So that's a 180 degree rotation around this point. So when you get to this question, don't be afraid to put dots and lines and, you know, and call this, you know, X, Y. So when you're in your uh, explanation, you can say that A will reflect across the reflection line X, Y, as shown, to get to C, okay? To get from A to B, if you want to do a reflection, make sure you put in a reflection line so I know what you're doing. Now, because there's two reflection lines, you're going to have to put, I don't know, call this, um, I don't know, K, L or something. Give them different letters so I know what you're talking about. Okay, so how does A get to B? How does A get to C? And how does A get to D? That kind of thing. Over here, same thing's going to happen. Read your in instructions. If you've got to put dots and, and label them so that you know what you're doing, just go for it. All right, let's read your questions carefully. Are there any other questions? Well, you can come and see me in class, and I'd be more than happy to help you. Other than that, we'll see you in class, and you can start your assignment. Catch you later.